Hello everybody, my name's Nicola and welcome back to my channel. This is the Food Cottage where we talk all things money to help you on your financial journey. Today's video is my budget with me for September 2022, so don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get started. I'd like to thank today's sponsor for making this video possible, which is Pouch. Pout is a desktop browser extension that I will talk more about in a bit. So I don't know if anyone else feels like this, it's probably because I've got children as well, but I always feel like September feels like a good kind of restart. A fresh start, start of, not a new year, but it's the start of a new school year, isn't it? And I feel like it seems like a good time for a reset of finances. And I am finally starting to feel like I can tackle all of these different things again, including having a budget, including tracking all of that, because... If you're not new here, you'll know what I'm talking about, but if you're new here, my life kind of fell apart a few months ago and I'm finally finding my feet after a long, long process of survival. And so, yeah, so September seems like a good time to just reassess how things are going and have a plan or a better plan moving forward. So as always, I'm using my budget planner. This is available in my Etsy shop. If you want to have a look, I'll leave the link below. But let's get started. So we are going to start one month long because I've started a new one. And actually I've got a new one in the works which will last for 12 months. So watch this space. However, I'm also going to do no spend September. So it kind of links in with feeling like a reset of finances. I tend to do a no spend month in January and a no spend month in September for the same reason it feels like a good place to do that. And so the first, so the aims of the month here is a no spend month. No spend month. And my second aim here, and you might wonder why I'm putting this as like a finance channel, but it actually is to track everything. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I say that I have totally, finances just haven't been a priority. I've totally, I, I even lost interest, I guess, in it all and I've been about survival for such a long time that I feel like I'm now feeling like I can do this again. So no spend month and track everything and obviously my budget planner will help me to do that. One of expenses this month, no. September tends to be really quiet. You're just getting into new routines and looking at kind of looking ahead to kind of the winter time and there's nothing major that happens in September, at least for us anyway, there's nothing major. No spend day now, because it's a no spend month, this should be higher. However, because I've not tracked or done this in quite a while, I don't want to set up myself for failure either. I'm going to put 20, which I realise is not high for a no spend month. But if I get this, because I couldn't tell you the last time I managed that, I'll be really pleased for that. So no spend month, track everything and have a no spend day as 20. So let's move across to the monthly budget page now. There are certain things that have changed recently within my own financial circumstances. So like my income is much, much less. I've gone from a two income household to a one income household. And so obviously my budget and everything else has to reflect that, unfortunately. Let's have a look at variable expenses to begin with. So we're going to start off with food and food now is a very different number. So it's just me and my two children here and they are seven and four so they don't eat that much and actually they're out of the house for tea quite a few times during the week so food bill in terms of what I actually spend on food should be much lower. I am actually going to put this at £150 for the three of us which in some ways still feels like quite a lot however I just need to um, rein everything in or everything back quite a lot and so I'm hoping that the food bill there will be sustainable and obviously if it's not and I'm finding that I'm going way over that and stuff then I'll reassess that next month that's the the joy of having a budget that you can kind of work with a bit but in terms of food it just I'm just not buying as much I, d I don't need to and I have really struggled with changing that so it'll be interesting to see during September when we're back into the normal routine, how that reflects that. I'm gonna switch for a minute from my budget with me to share with you more information about the kind sponsorship from Pouch. Pouch is a free desktop browser extension that finds and automatically applies the best discount codes when you're shopping online. Now, we all shop online, so this is such a good thing 
to have whilst you're shopping and it's a free extension that will save you money. So I was looking on Iceland for the food shop because I'm trying to save money and I was shopping on Iceland for just different things and when I got to the checkout, pouch automatically popped up, found me the codes that would save money, applied it, saving me £5, which is 12% on my shopping. Pouch works on over 3,000 UK sites like Superdrug, Wilkinson's, Dunelm, all the types of things that you might be looking at for shopping towards the end of the year. Imagine getting discounts on all of your favourite retailers. And even if there are no live codes available at the time that you're shopping online, you can still earn points from participating retailers, which can be redeemed for gift cards. So that could be really beneficial towards the end of the year. It only takes a couple of clicks to install and make sure you pin it to your browser. So get Pouch for free right now by clicking the link at the top of this video's description. Petrol is a difficult one. I'm going to have to put this up. So I think petrol is going to be £200 a month. Which is such a substantial part of my budget. But I have to have it. I have to get to work and back. And I, I travel quite far for work. So I'm just going to have to deal with that as and when it comes. Miscellaneous. So if you're new here, miscellaneous covers things like we've got two cats. It covers just household things, general stuff that doesn't fit in any of the others basically. I used to have more variable expense categories and envelopes but it just got too confusing so I kind of condensed it. So miscellaneous I'm going to put a £50 and hope that covers everything. Children, I don't like the idea of reducing their budget but especially for September, there's as far as I know none of their friends have birthdays, there's nothing going on particularly, I've just spent a fortune on school uniform and all that. I shouldn't need to spend too much on them but then it feels a bit mean to reduce it. But I'm, you know, I'm gonna have to, I think. So it used to be 100 every month. I'm now gonna put, I'm gonna put that to 70 and see how we go. It might have to even be less next month. And then eating out because it's a no spend month is gonna be zero. And we'll see how that works. It doesn't seem like I've reduced it by enough. But at the same time, there's only so much you can reduce things by, isn't there? Especially with all these prices going up. So that works out at 470 pounds for my variable expenses. And let's hope that I can manage that. I'm sure I can. Just got to get my head back in the game, so to speak. So next I'm going to talk about is my sinking funds. So Christmas, I'm going to put £30 in. I'm conscious that Christmas is kind of getting here really quickly. Birthdays is £20. Disneyland is £30, which I realise is not a lot, but it's going to be. And then car is £20. And then if I somehow get anything else during the month, I will add that as well. That's a hundred pound there into different sinking funds. Again, and I talk about this often, my money just doesn't go in all directions anymore. And then savings, so this is the one that I find the most difficult in terms of the impact, I suppose. I'm so used to putting what feels like quite a large number into investments, and I haven't been able to do that for months, and I don't know where that journey will go from here on in. And I'm not gonna put any in this time, I'm just gonna put well, hopefully I'm going to put £100 into my savings to try and have something that's going towards our, not even our, my longer term goals, but we'll see. So they are the monthly budget numbers for turnover. I'm not going to use those yet. I'm not going to fill those in yet. The next one is the no spend day tracker. So the aim for that is 20. And obviously I colour those in different colours for that. If I get that, like I said, I'll be really pleased by that. And then I can't fill in any of these either because we've not started yet. I do like tracking all of my spending. I also highlight the different categories because if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a very much a visual person and I like to have motivation that way. Extra income, in an ideal world, I've got so much stuff in my house. I've got things that I could do to get rid of. We'll see how that goes. I don't want to give myself too much and then just yeah I can't do it so savings I can't believe the last time I filmed one of these properly back whenever it was my savings aim was 700 pound this this time is 100 pound and it doesn't make me feel great so that is my budget with me for September I can't believe we're in September already this year has just been the I thought the last two years are weird but this year personally has been even worse <laughs> But there we go, so that is my budget for September 2022 done. Have you done your budget? How does it look? Are you feeling it like me or is it going okay? Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to install Pouch for Free by clicking the link in the description and get yourself saving some more money. And as always, thank you for watching. 
don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you again very soon.